Exclusive. Anheuser-Busch faces call to reaffirm support for trans community after Mulvaney pushback. By Brooke Migdon. The human rights campaign is calling on Anheuser-Busch, the maker of Bud Light, to publicly reaffirm its support for the transgender community following weeks of right-wing pushback over the brewing company's recent partnership with transgender social media influencer Dylan Mulvaney. In a letter sent this week to Anheuser-Busch's head of human resources, Jay Brown, a senior vice president at the Human Rights Campaign Foundation, slammed the company's response to the controversy as insufficient and cowardly. In this moment, it is absolutely critical for Anheuser-Busch to stand in solidarity with Dylan and the trans community, reads the April 26 letter obtained by The Hill. However, when faced with anti-LGBTQ plus and transphobic criticism, Anheuser-Busch's actions demonstrate a profound lack of fortitude in upholding its values of diversity, equity, and inclusion to employees, customers, shareholders and the LGBTQ plus community. This not only lends credence to hate-filled rhetoric, it exposes Anheuser-Busch to long-term business impacts with employees and customers increasingly looking for steadfast commitment to LGBTQ plus corporate citizenships, Brown wrote. The Human Rights Campaign is the nation's largest LGBTQ civil rights organization. Conservative media personalities, musicians and politicians for nearly a month have waged a highly publicized campaign against Anheuser-Busch after Mulvaney shared a sponsored post to her Instagram page promoting Bud Light's March Madness contest. The transgender social media star, who has shared her transition journey with followers online, addressed the pushback for the first time on Thursday telling her 1.8 million Instagram followers in a video that she's doing okay, despite the hate she has received. I think it's okay to be frustrated with someone or confused, she said. But what I'm struggling to understand is the need to dehumanize and to be cruel. Responding to the criticism of its partnership with Mulvaney, Anheuser-Busch CEO Brendan Whitworth this month said the company has thousands of partners, millions of fans and a proud history of supporting our communities, military, first responders, sports fans and hard-working Americans everywhere. We never intended to be part of a discussion that divides people, Whitworth said in a written statement shared on Anheuser-Busch's social media accounts. We are in the business of bringing people together over beer. The company this month also put the marketing executive who oversaw the partnership between Bud Light and Mulvaney on a leave of absence, according to media reports. Pushback over Anheuser-Busch's partnership with Mulvaney comes at a pivotal time for transgender rights, as well as LGBTQ rights more broadly. Nearly 470 bills targeting LGBTQ people have been introduced this year in state legislatures nationwide, according to the American Civil Liberties Union. This year alone, 40 new anti-LGBTQ bills have been signed into law, with most targeting the transgender community. At least 10 transgender and gender nonconforming people have been killed this year, according to HRC data. According to the HRC letter, the group is preparing to lower Anheuser-Busch's long-standing 100% corporate equality index score, a national benchmarking tool on corporate policies, practices and benefits relevant to LGBTQ employees. Brown in the letter requests that company executives meet with HRC leadership to discuss a number of recommendations including that Anheuser-Busch releases a public statement, reaffirming its full support for its transgender customers, shareholders, and employees. Anheuser-Busch has declined several meeting requests from HRC in the wake of right-wing pushback over its partnership with Mulvaney, according to an individual with knowledge of the situation. Anheuser-Busch did not immediately respond to the Hill's request for comment. The letter also recommends that Anheuser-Busch meet with its LGBTQ employees to discuss and understand their concerns and conduct workplace transgender inclusion training for company executives. Rights Campaign Fatal Violence Against the Transgender and Gender Non-Conforming Community in 2023 The Human Rights Campaign is both saddened and infuriated by the deaths of at least nine transgender and gender non-conforming people whose lives have been tragically and inhumanely taken through violent means, including through gun and interpersonal violence, in 2023. Since 2013, the Human Rights Campaign has tracked incidents of fatal transgender violence. The same year the Federal Bureau of Investigation began reporting on hate crimes motivated by anti-transgender bias and providing action items that can help end the violence. 
These victims, like all of us, are loving partners, parents, family members, friends and community members. They worked, went to school and attended houses of worship. They were real people, people who did not deserve to have their lives taken from them. As HRC continues to work toward justice and equality for transgender and gender non-conforming people, we mourn those we have lost in 2023. Coco Dadal was a 35-year-old black transgender woman, a successful rapper who was working on new music, and starred in the barrier-breaking, award-winning Sundance Film Festival documentary, Kokomo City. Tragically, Coco was found shot to death near an Atlanta shopping plaza on April 18. Ashley Burton was a 37-year-old black transgender woman who was described as a courageous fighter by her cousin. Her brother Patrick praised her authenticity as a trans woman saying, The way my sibling moved in life, it was, take it or leave it. This is how I am. You can respect it or neglect it, but Ashley put it out there and let that person know. It's not going to be a secret. Ashley was killed in Atlanta, Georgia on April 11, 2023. Tasaya Woodland was a black, high-spirited, transgender woman who was protective of those she loved. On a GoFundMe page, Tasia's aunt, Lizzie Woodland, said, she made everyone around her know that they were loved. Tasaya was tragically killed in St. Mary's County, Maryland on March 24, 2023. Torchigita, a 26-year-old indigenous queer and non-binary environmental activist and community organizer, is remembered as a radiant, joyful, beloved community member, who brought an indescribable jubilance to each and every moment of their life and, fought tirelessly to honor and protect the sacred land of the Wilani Forest. They took great joy in caring for each and every person that they came across. Torchigita was shot and killed by Georgia State Troopers in Atlanta, Georgia on January 18, 2023 during an ongoing protest alongside other self-described, forest defender, protesters against a proposed $90 million. 85-acre police training facility deemed Cop City by activists, slated to be built in the Wilani Forest in Atlanta. In a GoFundMe started to help cover funeral costs for Chashay Henderson, the 31-year-old black transgender woman is described as a bubbly spirit with a down-to-earth, tell-it-like-it-is personality, who was as beautiful as can be, inside and out. The GoFundMe also notes that Chashay is survived by her father, mother, sister, and niece as well as other family and, many, many friends. Chashay was shot in Milwaukee on February 26, 2023. Maria Jose Rivera Rivera, a 22-year-old Latina transgender woman, was described by her immigration lawyer as, lively, funny, and dynamic, and, a joy to work with. On January 21, 2023, Maria Jose was found fatally shot in Houston, one of two people found dead at an apartment complex in an apparent murder-suicide. Her death is at least the fifth violent killing of a transgender or gender non-conforming person in 2023. On a GoFundMe page for Zaki Imanitwitaho's funeral expenses, the black transgender woman was described as someone who was well-loved by family, friends, and co-workers, and that she lived her life bravely and authentically. She immigrated to the U.S. from Rwanda and was killed on February 3, 2023, in Louisville, Kentucky in the parking lot of her workplace. Unique Banks, a 21-year-old Latina trans woman, was killed in a mass shooting along with her mother, Alexandra Olmo, on January 23, 2023, in Chicago. Unique's father Omar Burgos said that his heart is torn apart and that he had hoped for her to live with him in Florida. Three other people, including two other trans women, were also attacked during the shooting, leaving them in critical condition. According to local news, Casey Johnson's partner Bulla Brzezinski remembered her as being kind and caring. The 27-year-old white transgender woman who was killed in Wilmington, North Carolina on January 14, 2023, after being declared missing on January 13. Jasmine, star, Max's sister, Pamela Witherspoon, said that Jasmine was a sweet person. She also said that her sister loved to sing gospel songs and was an excellent actor. The 36-year-old black transgender woman who was killed in Washington, D.C. on January 7, 2023. HRC works to shed light on this epidemic of violence in order to ensure victims' lives are remembered with dignity and to work to end the stigma that so many trans and gender non-conforming people face.
HRC confirms these cases by working with local advocates, the media and sometimes law enforcement. Additional concerning deaths of transgender and gender non-conforming individuals. In doing the work, there are some cases that surface that are unclear, where victims may have died by other means than violent acts by another individual. In these cases, HRC works to monitor developments closely and calls for further investigation into the causes and circumstances surrounding their deaths. Most of these victims were killed by partners and acquaintances, others by strangers, some of whom have been arrested and charged, while others have yet to be identified. Some of these cases involve clear anti-transgender bias. In others, the victim's transgender or gender non-conforming status may have put them at risk in other ways, such as forcing them into unemployment, poverty, homelessness and or survival sex work. While the details of these cases differ, It is clear that fatal violence disproportionately affects transgender women of color, particularly black transgender women, and that the intersections of racism, sexism, homophobia, biphobia, transphobia and unchecked access to guns conspire to deprive them of employment, housing, healthcare and other necessities. An Epidemic of Violence 2022 In this report, we shed light on the epidemic of violence taking the lives of transgender and gender non-conforming people. We remember the individuals who were taken from us in 2022 and provide analysis of data we have collected on fatal violence against transgender and gender non-conforming people since 2013, the year the Federal Bureau of Investigation began reporting on hate crimes motivated by anti-transgender bias. Dismantling a Culture of Violence As is too often the case in the reporting of violence against transgender and gender non-conforming people, many of these victims are misgendered in local police statements and media reports, which can delay our awareness of deadly incidents. Brief Guide to Getting Transgender Coverage Right HRC has been tracking reports of fatal anti-transgender violence for the past several years. Previous reports can be found. 2022, 2021, 2020, 2019. 2018, 2017, 2016, and 2015. From the Hill. Trans influencer Dylan Mulvaney responds to Bud Light ad critics. I'm an easy target. By Brooke Migdon. Transgender social media influencer Dylan Mulvaney this week addressed her critics after right-wing protests unfolded on social media over her recent partnership with Bud Light. The reason I think I'm an easy target is because I'm still new to this. Mulvaney said Tuesday during an episode of I Heart Podcasts Onward with Rosie O'Donnell. I think going after a trans woman who has been doing this for 20 years is a lot more difficult. Mulvaney last month shared a sponsored post to her Instagram page promoting Bud Light's March Madness contest, drawing swift backlash from conservative critics, who launched protests against Bud Light and its parent company, Anheuser-Busch, on social media. In a viral Instagram video, Singer-songwriter Kid Rock shot several cases of Bud Light with what appeared to be a semi-automatic rifle. F. Bud Light and F. Anheuser-Busch, he said in the video. Fellow country music star Travis Tritt responded to Mulvaney's video by announcing that he will be deleting all Anheuser-Busch products from my tour hospitality rider. I know many other artists who are doing the same, he wrote in a post on Twitter. Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene, Argaw. Last week also tweeted a photo of a case of Coors Light in the backseat of a car, writing, I would have bought the King of Beers, but it changed its gender to the Queen of Beers. So it's made to chill from here on out. Similar criticism arose online after Mulvaney posted a second sponsored Instagram post last week, this time by Nike. Caitlyn Jenner, who is also a transgender woman, said the brand's partnership with Mulvaney is an outrage. As someone that grew up in awe of what Phil Knight did, it is a shame to see such an iconic American company go so woke. Jenner wrote on Twitter. Mulvaney on Monday voiced concerns that hateful statements shared about her by celebrities and social media influencers with large followings will worsen real-world violence against the transgender community. The people that are talking about me on their podcast, I'm worried about their listeners, she said. It's a heavy time, and it's just time to step up for sure. Mulvaney, who publicly came out as transgender last year, added that she's watched the world for transgender people grow much more dangerous even since beginning her own transition. I have watched it get so much worse, 
as my timeline has gone on, she said. And it's been very kind of odd to compare the two. My transition as well as all this anti-trans legislation simultaneously. More than 450 bills targeting the rights of LGBTQ people in the U.S. have been introduced this year in over 40 states, according to the American Civil Liberties Union, ACLU, including a record-setting number of proposed laws that target transgender people, specifically. At least 14 states since last year have enacted laws or policies that ban gender-affirming health care for minors, and more than 20 now prohibit transgender women and girls from competing on female sports teams. Transgender students in at least seven states are also prevented from using school restrooms or locker rooms consistent with their gender identity, according to the Movement Advancement Project, which tracks laws and policies that impact LGBTQ Americans. Updated at 6.22 p.m. Some Bud Lights for us. So, I kept hearing about this thing called March Madness, and I thought we were all just having a hectic month, but it turns out it has something to do with sports. And I'm not sure exactly which sport, but either way, it's a cause to celebrate. This month, I celebrated my day 365 of womanhood, and Bud Light sent me possibly the best gift ever, a can with my face on it. Check out my Instagram story to see how you can enjoy March Madness with Bud Light and maybe win some money too. Love ya! Cheers! Go team! Whatever team you love, I love too. Okay. Love ya. Okay, break a leg. From ACLU. Mapping attacks on LGBTQ rights in U.S. state legislatures. Defend the rights of all people nationwide. Abortion care. Trans people's right to live freely. People's right to vote. Our freedoms are at stake and we need you with us. Donate today and fuel our fight in courts, state houses, and nationwide. In the last few years states have advanced a record number of bills that attack LGBTQ rights, especially transgender youth. The ACLU is tracking these attacks and working with our national network of affiliates to support LGBTQ people everywhere. While more states every year work to pass laws to protect LGBTQ people, state legislatures are advancing bills that target transgender people, limit local protections, and allow the use of religion to discriminate. The ACLU will not stop speaking out against these cruel attacks nationwide. LGBTQ people have a right to live in safety, to thrive, and to be treated with dignity. How the ACLU tracks anti-LGBTQ legislation. Our legal and advocacy team works with ACLU affiliates and local organizations across the country to monitor state legislatures for bills targeting the rights of LGBTQ people. Each bill is reviewed by legal staff at the ACLU's LGBTQ and HIV project before being categorized on this site. The process by which bills become law or not differ in each state depending on state law and constitutions. The ACLU is tracking 469 anti-LGBTQ bills in the U.S. Choose a filter below the map to show the different bills targeting LGBTQ rights and take action. While not all of these bills will become law, They all cause harm for LGBTQ people. View past legislative sessions.